sir. I'm just putting it live on YouTube. Okay, so we are good to go. Uh, Pranu, over to you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this very informative and interesting session. This is Ranu Yadav from NIVO Global, your host for the evening, and I wholeheartedly welcome all our panelists and attendees. I really appreciate and I'm grateful to everyone for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be a part of this webinar. Our topic for today's webinar is skills for future. In the year 2030, it's highly likely we would be working in a job that doesn't even exist yet. The world of work is evolving quickly, which means we have to figure out how to prepare for a job role that's impossible to predict. So let's begin with a brief introduction of our company and our view global. Founded by a dynamic group of HR professionals, NFU Global specializes in leadership development, training and organizational development, HR outsourcing, HR operations, and HR advisory space. Our team has more than 100 plus years of industry experience in various areas such as BFSI, retail, FMCG, cement and chemical manufacturing, agriculture, sugar, biotechnology, life sciences, NGO, education sector. We provide advisory along with end-to-end -end HR support to MNC organizations looking to set up expand business in India. Our team specializes in providing HR consultancy services to SMEs and startups. NFU has an expertise in using technology to achieve organizations' people objectives. We have experience of designing and driving HR and OD strategies, policies, and processes in diverse environments. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our speakers for the evening. Our first speaker, Mr. Kishore Jaitmal. Mr. Kishore Jaitmal was a trainer with IPAM, the Institute of Public Administration and Management, Civil Service College, Singapore. He is an international trainer with over 20 years of experience in management, leadership, and creative skills. He helps managers and executives realize their excellence. He is an international trainer who has been conducting courses such as team building since 2002 to many government institutions, schools, private organizations in Singapore, and overseas. Some of the courses he has conducted include team building, work, life harmony through experiential learning, outdoor experiential learning, ten castle team building, and making teams work. His clients include Sumitomo Chemical, Singapore, Intech Corporation, Philippines, Ministry of Home Affairs, Prison Department, Singapore, Republic of Singapore, Navy, and many more. Welcome, Mr. Kishore. Thank you very much. Now, our next speaker, Dr. Prashant Kharge. Dr. Prashant has total experience of 17 years in evangelizing genomics and healthcare. During disruptive ways of genomics and healthcare, technology evangelists with consultative sales and marketing skills, networking skills, analytical and critical thinking, high performance PhD in genetics from BARC Mumbai and postdoc from University of Georgia, USA with MBA. He has worked on techno-commercial leadership positions with reputed MNCs like BioRed, Thermo, and Prema's Life Sciences. Well versed with healthcare and clinical applications of NGS, microarray, digital PSR, PCR, real-time PCR, DNA sequencing, cell analyzer, and cell sorter. Currently contributing to success of Pensive Health, MyLab Discovery's USA-based startup, Chemix Health. Dr. Prashant is COVID Task Force member of AAPM, American Association for Precision Medicine, USA. Welcome, Dr. Prashant. Thank you. Thank you so much. And our third panelist, 
Mr. Devinder Dalal. Devinder has 18 plus years varied experience in human resource domain with software product and service companies. He has extensive exposure in design, development, and execution of HR strategies, including managing growth and capability building. Currently working with ESCOM Info Solutions and have prior experience with SafeNet and CLC technologies. Devinder handled end-to-end -end HR activities with special focus on talent acquisition, performance management, competency mapping, successfully developed technical career ladder and technical assessment modules for software product organization. Also handle the merger and acquisition process to integrate the culture and process of two different organizations. He did his master's from Sambhaisal Institute of Management Studies, Pune. Welcome, Mr. Devinder. Thanks, thanks very much. And now I would like to introduce our moderator of the webinar today, Mr. Abhimanyu Yadav. Abhimanyu Yadav is the founder and director of Enervio Global. Prior to starting on his own, he had completed his MBA in HR from Symbiosis Pune and Masters in Labor Laws and Labor Welfare from Symbiosis University, Pune. He is also certified as Human Resource Management Professional by HR Certification Institute, USA and Senior Certified Professional by Society for Human Resource Management, USA. During his professional stint of 17 plus years in human resource domain, Abhimanyu has handled diversified roles and large teams in recruitment, HR operations, plant HR and corporate HR across banking, retail, manufacturing, biotechnology and life sciences, NGO sectors, across countries like India, Vietnam, Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, and Singapore. He has worked with his last two organizations head, as head of HR. I once again extend a warm welcome to our panelists and participants for joining us today. Before we start, let me share some house rules for the webinar. You can type in the chat if you want to join our discussion and write your questions in Q&A as at the end we will have Q&A session to answer your queries. I would now hand over to our moderator, Mr. Abhimanyu, for taking over the next part of the session today. Over to you, Abhimanyu. Thank you so much, Ranu, for that fantastic introduction. And I welcome our panelists as well as our participants uh, in today's discussion. So before we uh, dive into the discussion, would quickly want to run a small poll to get our participants in the discussion. And I would, we would li like to know that how would you rate your current understanding on the future skills requirement? I'm just launching the poll, would request if uh, all the participants, if it is open to the participants, if all the participants can answer this, please. So we'll wait for all of you to answer. Please go ahead, this is the poll. Yes, I can see now about 30% already voted. We'll wait maybe for another three odd seconds. Three, two, and one. All right. So I'm just ending the poll and sharing the results. All right. So I think that's a good starting point for our discussion. Uh, almost 67% of you feel that, you know, it, it is the understanding is there, but it is moderate and quite a few of you would like to know more. So I think you are in the right room uh, for the discussion. Great. So moving on, uh, before taking in the panelists' views, would we'll just share a you know, couple of uh, thoughts with all of you. One is about uh, the fact that a lot of research is throwing very interesting you know, pointers for future for us, for all of us. So one such recent report, which I was talking and I was uh, reading about was McKinsey report, which says that 25% of the global workforce would either need to substantially learn new skills in terms of technology, in terms of all the other areas, or they may be out of job in the next, let's say, three years or so. So this is a short-term view that they have taken. Whereas by 2030, it is predicted that almost 85% of the workforce would need a lot of skills which may not exist today. A lot of jobs would be there which again may not exist today. 
so this throws a very interesting you know question to all of us so what are we going to do about it and at this point in time you know although there are a lot of trends that i'll also share uh, as we uh, go along into the discussion but what are the, what are the major trends and how is the landscape of employment and skills currently that you know one of uh, some of our panelists see so would uh, throw it open maybe we can start with uh, dr prashant your initial thoughts you know as to what is the current landscape that you see yeah thanks thanks abhimanyu for uh, thanks ranu and everyone for a uh, good introduction uh, basically you know uh, if you feel uh, now we are talking during the pandemic so i feel you know pandemic or the covid has played a very vital role uh, you know to bring this topic for the discussion uh, and i think in near future like we says before ad and after ad that, that the new generation will say you know before covid and after covid post covid or pre covid area or uh, era so because of that you know many perception has changed uh, our thought process has changed about the understanding how how we look at now my specialization and expertise in healthcare so pardon me you know if i am more inclined towards healthcare per se but i personally feel that um, we cannot put verticals nowadays uh, between two segments or between two expertise because day by day the things are getting more multidisciplinary because though i am being a, a, a doctor or you know a researcher in in life science or biotechnology i cannot say oh i i, I don't know computer or you know i don't know how to uh, uh, operate a particular software or you know if uh, i don't know statistics because you know uh, without statistical relevance whatever the biological data i will present uh, that will having a big zero value so um, first of all you know we always say i i as a person or me and then second i is for the intelligence so this two i so i, I will go with i so whatever we do you know whether it is a technology question whether it is a business question whether it is intellectual question whether it is a office behavior or the peer acceptance question you know uh, because soft skills are also equally important you know whatever we do in in, in our organizations so i personally feel this is a continuous process uh, now we cannot say that you know i am a master uh, bachelor or a doctorate so that is the aim so it is a continuous process and we should keep on giving a finishing touch to 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 what we are and 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 we have to think ahead if you really want to be ahead than else so so you know it it, it this is uh, uh, something what what we can say uh, in earlier days i will i can try to simplify you know uh, uh, our parent used to say do hard work and then you know i i, I can see in during my college days my gurus used to say me oh you have to be a smart do a smart work but now i'm teaching to my daughter uh, do it work okay so definitely you know uh, hard work and smart work matters uh, i'm i'm not denying that that network cannot cannot cannibalize but you know network is important now that network in terms of getting a knowledge being a more skillful or network in terms of your internet also if you don't have network let us say for one hour you are the most helpless and handicapped person nowadays so both networks are equally important so you know uh, this new things uh, you 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 need to keep on uh, understanding and justifying right thank you thank you kishore what are your initial thoughts uh, on on this Uh, I would like being a professional trainer, running all these courses for a lot of private organizations and government agencies. I would like to share with you all some of the new recent courses that I've been conducting, which are not run of the mill kind of courses. For example, nowadays we run a lot of courses in Singapore called design thinking. Okay, design thinking is something that is uh, totally different. It is not about uh, just product development. it is actually looking uh doing things and looking from the eyes of the consumer okay like user experience designer okay and uh, uh interaction uh, experience designer this kind of skills are coming up nowadays so that people can still be manufacturers and companies can still be competitive and they will create a niche market for themselves how to differentiate from their from their customer from their from their competitors so things like design thinking courses are a lot in demand nowadays things like user experience designer 
okay? And uh, IE, designer, these are all important things I'm seeing coming up today. In addition to the leadership kind of trainings we do, okay, traditionally, we used to run a lot of leadership courses covering traditional basic leadership styles, like dominator style, negotiator style, and uh, coordinator style. But nowadays, the demand is coming for agile leadership, where leaders have to work in, um, uh, they have to work in effectively under conditions of rapid change and complexity. So now the competencies are things like expert leader, achiever, catalyst, co-creator, synergies. These are the kind of terms and competencies that are evolving to able to handle the, the rapid changes and the high complexity of situations that we are facing. And even simple things like uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint slide. Nowadays, I'm still seeing a lot of government agencies and private companies uh, requesting for these sort of courses, not only in basic, even in uh, intermediate and advanced. Many of us have picked up our IT skills on Word, Microsoft, PowerPoint slide through trial and error. We've not had any, many of us have not had any formal training. We pick it up along the way. But now uh, people are requesting for a lot of these sort of skills because I think Working from home is going to be something that is going to last a very long time. People, and if you work from home, that means your ability and competency to use IT platforms become very, very critical. Everybody is going to work like a silo. Now you have to do your own uh, data mining, you have to do your own analysis, and you have to do your own prediction. So courses like uh, Data, anal data analytics capabilities, data management and data reporting, data vis visualization, these become very, very important skills because as people are working from home, they are working like a silo and they must come up with the necessary information to present to their superiors for decision-making. Another course which I've seen regularly coming out, people are demanding for, is called... Um, uh, completed staff work, where a lot of technical experts are expected now to be able to do research and come up with a proposal, a complete package of a proposal that your manager just has to sign yes or no. He doesn't have to do any more work. That means it must be so comprehensive. The proposal must be so comprehensive. Okay, nothing more for the no additional research required for the manager to present to the board. So these sort of skills I'm noticing are coming up a lot in demand nowadays because right. of working from home situation. Right, okay? right. I think uh, very interesting thoughts, uh, Kishore. And I would pick it from where you left. So what we are saying is the business environment itself is changing. Yes. And hence the demand for new skills which is coming up. Mm. Now, having said that, uh, if, if the business changing the demand for skill set is changing having no known all of this if i were to talk about a business owner if i am a young professional so to say or even if i am a student today i spoke about the stats a little earlier why should it bother me how does it impact me in terms of my employability in terms of my business you know going down 5 to 7 years from now and I would uh, want to take in Devinder, uh, you on this. Maybe we can start off with you. So we know the landscape is changing, but why should it bother a businessman or a business owner or somebody who is into employment or even studying today? Okay. Uh, see, if we see the, uh, you know, how things are changing, everything is changing you know, on an everyday basis, right? And uh, you know, if we see the paradigm where we uh, earlier started with looking for the solution for the problems, right? And that we have uh, all the big giants coming and doing, helping us out in different areas, especially in the uh, last century. But in this century, right, things completely change. The people who are simplifying the things, right, are the one who became billionaires in maybe less than a decade. You talk about Facebook, you talk about Uber, you talk about Spotify, any aggregator. Right? Now, these are the ways how things are changing, that you have so many things, so much data which is available. 
right so in that scenario right we need to upgrade ourselves now especially where industry 4.0 is there where uh, machines are controlling machines right so the old fundamentals old jobs are going to change right now we have a lot of robots which are there in the you know uh, for taking care of different activities but it that generates a different kind of a work environment a uh, different kind of a thing technologies are changing so we need to you know upgrade ourselves so it's going to be a continuous process for everyone for a you know a business owner to sustain in the market right for the uh, workers and employees to be there employable right otherwise they will be replaced Right. Sure. So that is going to be a continuous process. That's the reason it's a high impact area. Sure, sure. Uh, so, Dr. Prashant, what's what's your take on this? How does it impact your business? So, you know, I will I will, I will just give you a very uh, good example. You know, recent past uh, because of COVID again. Uh, you know, earlier gone are those days that you know if someone wants to do a, their routine checking like thyroid or sh- blood sugar or something like that, you know. we have to go to the lab for giving the sample and then again might be going lab for getting the reports or something now you know uh, uh, devinder has given very good example of aggregator now in healthcare also there are aggregators now you have to just you know enter into a app and just book your appointment the phlebotomist will at your home will collect the sample you know before fasting posting and all other things and you 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 get you, you get the report in your email or on your whatsapp okay so you know it's not only work at home but most of the not the entire but some part of healthcare is also at your home you know so clinic at home you know now uh, many players have started that approach now just like you know uh, my lab has also started lab on wheel because we know that in in rural areas you know it is not possible that by the time person will go to the lab and uh, do the checking he might have been infected to hundreds of people so we thought that why lab cannot go to the villages so we had uh, some small uh, labs on wheel on uh, some mini truck and and the, the lab lab itself is going to the village and screening the entire village in a day or two and this keeps on moving from one small village or small colony to colony and uh, you know so we 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 are taking care not only for the infectious diseases but for other basic healthcare checkup also so you know uh many uh, things are changing now uh, in 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 healthcare it, this is this is on 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 field now earlier you know in on, on one day prior the phlebotomist used to know that which are the places where he used to go and visit now real time he is getting information on 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 app and we can look at that where my person is there just like uber uh, control office is locating the uber likewise we can we, we can see where is my person and if i see oh he is in some part of mumbai you know because transit is always challenging i can oh rather than traveling here why not you collect the samples from there and give it to that lab so that turn out time will be lesser so lot of things are coming you know uh, is a, a techno commercial techno intellectual thing thing things are coming and i i i can see a lot of things are getting uh, integrated a uh, uh, day by day like i give an example so when i was discussing this with health minister of uh, maharashtra particularly for hr city score you know in in march or april because of the second pandemic that was a very herculean everyone used to rush to you know uh, city scan and get infected there uh, unnecessarily uh, wanted to know what is my hr city score so what we thought uh, we had a tie up with some korean bus company small camera like which you can hold like you know you can go to your home you can have a x ray at your home okay a basic setup no dark room nothing and from there itself the your image will be uploaded on an app and it will be diagnosed by a super uh, expert radiologist sitting in the district uh, level so who is also using some ai based app so it is not you are not compromising on the quality but still in the lesser turnout time the patient is getting a second hand opinion or the second opinion or the cross opinion so many things are coming i think we need to uh, you know change ourselves with 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 the, our, our patient has to be always uh, open and you know now one thing is that we have to be ready for the disruptive ways but on other hand affordable also because if you are talking about a country like india so disruptive should come the next word should come the affordable otherwise only disruptive doesn't make any sense if it is not affordable so oh, so oh, so oh, thank you so much for your thoughts uh, what about you kishore you uh, consult lot of companies across southeast asia 
what is your sense of of um, you know the organizations who would be late in picking up this trend and you know what could be the possible impact on such companies or such individuals uh, so to say okay. the businesses that we deal with okay i would say about uh, maybe close to 10 to 15% of them have closed down because they just couldn't adapt they just couldn't manage teams working from home it is not easy to manage teams virtually okay some of the other courses that we run a lot in philippines is managing virtual teams okay which are very very important because most of the people are a lot of the government agencies and employees are working from home so many leaders and team leaders do not know how to manage and coordinate people working from home so that they can get their projects completed on time they are lacking the skill okay and uh, they are also afraid that if they become too hard on their staff the staff may not cooperate with them may not respect them so uh, they are having big problems in how to manage their virtual teams for those who are working from home okay how do we get that productivity and efficiency and proper coordination to get the whole project uh, run up properly okay those who have managed to upgrade themselves they are managing managing but they are still learning okay they are still learning new skills on the primary focus of productivity productivity has dropped tremendously when people initially when people work from home they think this fun is easy but it's not easy it is very difficult to work from home okay with the distractions that you have your kids your your parents or all who are sick your kids who are young coming and going so it becomes very difficult so there are a lot of techniques we run a lot of courses on things like how to work productively and efficiently at home for team members so these sort of things are very very important so organizations are realizing that working from home maybe uh, in the long haul it may be the new normal that will last for a very long time and they are doing all they can to upgrade the technological capabilities of their seniors and they are managers and supervisors they're doing a lot for these people otherwise they know they cannot catch up they cannot cope and they cannot catch up because every a lot of businesses sales are down tremendously this affects their cash flow and if they cannot increase the productivity they are going to have big problems financially in the very near future so organizations realize that entrepreneurs businessmen realize that that they have to upgrade they have to reskill they have to upskill it's very very important they have no choice yeah this is my take on it right i think uh, very very interesting points uh, you know my my take is also uh, in terms of the awareness i think a lot of organizations are aware that they need to upskill and reskill their staff it is only the current environment of covid has only you know sort of uh, put it on a fast pace you know put it put in that sense of urgency because you know suddenly you found uh, a day that you know there is lockdown and you do not have any choice but to work from home you know but to look at collaboration to look at teamwork look at all other things uh, remotely you know you need to think out of the box and find solutions to uh, take care of uh, the needs of your employees so you know suddenly the scenario is uh, changed sort of you know pushed uh, you know some of us out of our comfort zones um, you know and made it made us realize that it is important to change so to that extent you know nobody knows my guess is as good as uh, anybody's guess that for how long this could continue but one thing is certain that some part of it may be a long term change like devinder also was touching upon earlier that you know uh, some organizations may want to have certain roles uh, specifically identified uh, which which work from home only and certain parts which could continue either in the field or from offices or you know some sort of hybrid model is being spoken about 
Now, this brings me uh, to another, uh, you know, very interesting part, which I keep on hearing a lot. There is a lot of research also, you know, which is uh, going around, which talks about, you know, gloom days. You know, so there is, there is a lot of, uh, you know, tomorrow with artificial intelligence coming in, you know, machine learning coming in, a lot of automation happening. Suddenly, boom, we'll find completely lost. So, you know, the thought that I was wanting to all of you to touch upon is, so is it in future, let's say five to seven years down the line, is it only going to be about, you know, skills around coding, machine learning, AI, or soft skills or some of the other things which will be, uh, you know, equally important in which uh, people studying today or young professional can start harnessing so that in the next five to seven years, uh, you know, when the, when the need is there, uh, they can take up those sort of roles or they can enhance uh, or they can move forward in their professional journey. So, uh, uh, Kishore, uh, perhaps you can, we can start with uh, you on this um, and, and then we'll go around the other panelists. Yeah. The, the key word was um, artificial intelligence. So, people need to upgrade and equip themselves with skills that will either be in line and support the development of artificial intelligence or go into areas that artificial intelligence cannot be relevant. So they need to focus and choose. So for areas of artificial intelligence, maybe they could go into things like coding, cloud computing, blockchain, uh, UX design. The soft skills to support these could be critical thinking, emotional intelligence, and communication skills, which are very, very important. Uh, cognitive flexibility in how fast they can change their thinking from one system to another system becomes very important. Negotiation skills. Although there will be a lot of IA machine taking care of machine, but there will still be humans around. Okay? The most important resource an organization will have is its human resource. That is something it cannot do without. Without a human resource, the machines cannot uh, function. Okay? So, Humans are required also, okay? So where humans are cons considered, negotiation skills of the humans and how they negotiate with their colleagues and other departments to get certain things done, this becomes very, very critical as well, okay? Service orientation skills, okay? Like design thinking, how to, to make sure you design a product not only based on the SWOT analysis of your organization or suppliers capability, but now looking at things from the consumer's point of view. Okay. So these are very, very uh, important skills. Okay. And some of the, maybe some of the courses that people should look out for in future that uh, IA cannot touch could be like maybe physical therapy, nursing, um, chemical engineering. This field of chemical engineering is the limelight at present Things like electrical engineering, medical technology, medical assistance, uh, computer information systems. These are important things I think graduates should try to focus on so that they can be ready and relevant for the future jobs that are going to come. So it's either supporting IA so, so Dr. or going to areas where IA cannot, cannot touch. Right, right. Thank you. So Dr. Prashant would, would love you to come in and talk about, you know, what are the broad themes in terms of skills that you see would be important beyond technology. I We know that, you know, you use technology a lot. Uh, you are a PhD yourself. So, you know, first of all, you know, I personally feel that whatever the new advancements are coming, we should not be bothered about whether it will uh, eat my job or it will cannibalize my job. I personally feel it will create a new job opportunity which is not existing at all today. For example, when Rajiv Gandhi was very proactive to get the computers in India because I am a student of Navodaya Vidyalaya and uh, you know we learned computer when we were in 6th and 7th standard so that was very very prime feeling you know where the even graduate guys they were never used to learn that. So now we see a computer is a part of our life and it has created more jobs rather than you know that was fear in India that oh it will eat my job. Okay. So I personally feel we should not learn something new because of some tension, because of some botheration. Oh, if I will not do that, 
uh, you know, I will be jobless. But with a positive attitude that if I will learn, I will do my work more efficiently. Accuracy and precision will be more. I will be top of the world. I will be better than what I today and day after, something like that. Now, the same question, you know, related to, I, I really want to answer here, uh, you know, I think some honorable audience, uh, Mr. Dev Pandey has asked, you know, related to this, that please help me appropriately to respond to the statement done by some of his colleague, that why I should learn if it is uncertain. If it is uncertain, why? So, you know, in life, there are two ways, whether you want to be a respond, react, or proactive. You will be only ahead when you are proactive. Now, if, if, you, if, you, if you, and people think that, you know, uh, Google uncle, WhatsApp university is the answer for everything, then I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it is wrong. Because most of the people think that, oh, they have the answer for every questions under the sun on Google. But, you know, any, any, anybody, Tom D. Curry can upload the, uh, you know, mischievous information on the Google. Don't ever think that whatever is on Google is the right one. Because that thing I'm facing from last 18, 20 months, particularly for the COVID. Anyone learns anything from the WhatsApp university or Google uncle and they put, oh, this is the, you know. So, you know, if, if the things are uncertain, if you are really, when, 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 when there is uncertain, then you are proactive. Then you, you, you make a plan A and plan B ready. If plan A doesn't work, plan B is there. So if the things are uncertain and if someone is not really, you know, I think, you know, uh, Devinder sir will answer this more because a little bit HR is also involved, how to handle uh, such employees, you know, uh, challenging employees. But on technology per se, you know, if, 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 if that gentleman is proactive to adopt a particular technology, he will be the ahead than the else, ahead than uh, other colleagues. Otherwise, you know, if you are reacting, then you cannot be a leader. As, as, as you said, now as uh, uh, being a businessman or being a running uh, uh, two, three segments, you know, uh, and, and active, you know, like, uh, as I said, Pensive Health and MX Health and my lab, I can see, you know, I, I, if, if I think ahead, if I'm a proactive, then only I, I, I you know, these, these ideas will come. When we, in 2020, we thought that, you know, first make in India kit. Then we thought, uh, you know, uh, lab on wheel. And then we thought home testing kit. Now, something I should think right now, I should not be overjoyed. So now I'm getting global recognition. Why I should think of, you know, my thought process has to be a continuous one. So likewise, uh, you know, uh, every person is an industry, industrious mind in, in his, you know, himself or herself. So if he think proactively, how I can cope up, it's not only, you know, protecting the job or, you know, procuring the job or, you know, sticking up that job. It is all about creating new avenues. I was also an employee just two, three years back. I was doing a service. I never thought that I would create 100 plus uh, employment around me. But, you know, that proactive thought process helped me that if I am a job seeker, why cannot be I am a job giver? And believe me, just I will take a one minute not uh, of, of, of the subject. Uh, you know, serving for your society, serving for your nation doesn't mean that you should hold gun and stand on the border and oh, I say, just, you know, I'm, I'm protecting my, my, my country or something like that. Serving for your society, serving for your nation, the first and important need is creating the jobs. Giving, giving that confidence to the youth. Yes, he can lead uh, the way. He can lead and he, he could be a self-sufficient to protect his family and to protect his desires and needs and dreams. That is also on one way, serving for your nation, serving for your society. So likewise, the new guys has to think either in their job or either in their business, then only things will happen. Right, right. I think it's uh, extremely important. Uh, you touched upon uh, very rightly on being proactive. So, you know, as a leader, whether you'd want to react to situations when uh, they are happening or you'd want to be proactive and prepare not only yourself, but your teams and your organizations also, because ultimately you are leading, you know, groups of people who depend on you. So for a leader, it is again uh, uh, utmost important to take care of these things. Okay, yeah, before so they, yeah, there sir, hope I answer a little bit. Uh, you know, you, you, you can uh, just will, apply this uh, later on. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So in fact, I'll just um, touch upon this piece that uh, I'll request all the participants to put in their questions in the Q and A tab. Uh, towards the end, we will have our pan panelists answer, uh, we'll have a live Q&A and our panelists uh, would answer all the queries. 
so please take uh, you know this opportunity take up this opportunity and uh, do ask your questions that's one also secondly i think at to, at this point in time i would before moving on uh, to the next section i would quickly want to bring in our participants again with another poll uh, and this time we would like to talk about something which is which is interesting but in terms of uh, a, a very debatable sort of a question that you know who plays a important role in terms of the upskill and reskill journey whether it is your organization whether it is uh, you as an employee whether you know both have equal responsibility or you are not very sure so would love all of you to please answer this poll uh, we have around 50% of people who have already voted wait for another 3 seconds and just try and see what is the thought and you know it would be very interesting to take the discussion forward so i am ending the poll in the next 3 seconds 3 2 and 1 right and sharing the results oh, wow so there are uh, you know uh, few people who think that it is uh, the individual's responsibility but uh, there is uh, a consensus you know sort of most of the people are thinking that it is both have equal responsibilities so i'll just stop sharing this and this brings me to the next section of our discussion so you know uh, uh, our panelist kishore dr prashant and devinder so there is a lot of debate which goes around you know who actually Uh, takes the ownership of upskilling and reskilling of an employee you know although we see that there is lot of awareness on the part of employees uh, to take the learning journey in their hands and to chart their own paths which may or may not go along with the organization's you know uh, career development journey that the organization may have for you but you may have certain area of interest you know which is different from the organization where they want to uh, take you but having said that having you know this awareness i would want to understand from all three of you and maybe we can start with devinder that according to you what is the importance of the individual in this whole learning journey and whether you feel it is more an onus on the individual or an organization as far as reskilling of an individual is concerned over to you so uh see uh, first of all it's not uh, no uh, either or or it's an and right so both are equally responsible for that so if you ask me inclination is towards employee or the individual more because uh, an organization can provide the office no the culture or the environment where you can study they can facilitate you in acquiring that knowledge but end of the day it's an individual who has to go for it right uh so that is the reason and uh, why uh, individual because it's a continuous process right you cannot switch it on or switch on or switch off kind of a thing so based on the previous discussion that was having and prashant and kishore gave a lot of inputs on that right is that uh, it's a uh, you know, when you are getting to the new things the way that things are changing right you have to have the continuous process of learning the things right you have to generate that habit learning is a habit right we cannot push anybody to do okay this thing otherwise it will have uh, no uh, the impact will be very limited so i'll give you an example as soon as lockdown happened right all the schools moved on the online system right and we realized that students are the one who easily able to adapt compared to teachers right because i think the students were you know, from starting see the technology you know, equipments there they don't have that kind of the fear right whereas uh, the you no know, teachers took an extra time to adapt those things so that's where i use the terminology uh, that kishore used you know the technology quotient the technology quotient of the you know uh, students are relatively very high compared to the teachers right so similarly you no know, similarly for all the learning activities the you no know, if it you no know, happening as part of the habit right we are doing it regularly right it's going to be very very easy to win the change right 
So generally we say the adapt the change, but adapt the, the change is wrong. It's a reactive one. And time will not give you the time to you know, do something good if you're adapting the change. You have to develop your habits in a way that you win the change. True. I think, uh, uh, you know, pretty important uh, point that you touched upon. Uh, Kishore, what's your, what's your take? What's, uh, you know, what's in it for the individual? Uh, I think you know. individuals must understand, okay, that, that investing in themselves is the best asset they can invest in. Okay. The knowledge will be theirs forever. Knowledge never really becomes uh, outdated or redundant. It just needs to be modified to the current situation. Okay, and uh, people should, individuals actually should be more concerned and should take greater initiative to upgrade themselves because the knowledge belongs to them. Tomorrow, if a company sponsors a training and if the staff resigns after the training, which many do, because now they have certain skills that they can apply for another job that is calling for those skills. Many employers are very, do not want to train their staff mainly for that reason or they do not give out a certificate until three or six months later to the employee. I've seen this happening in Philippines, okay? After the training, staff resigns. So many employers are not happy, okay? So em employees must also realize that the knowledge that they are the best asset to invest in, the knowledge belongs to them lifelong, okay? And uh, like what also Mr. Davinder said, the organization, the management can create the culture for the learning, okay? Now, developing people does not always mean they have to leave the office and go to a training center for two days for which the company has to pay money. No. There are much more other strategies that we can develop our staff, okay? Like, uh, like for example, coaching, like job rotation, like uh, observation, observation and then practicing, okay? On uh, Google, YouTube, uh, asking colleagues for help. There are so, reading self-help books. There are so many ways people can develop themselves. It doesn't have to involve money, it, funding. It doesn't have to involve absence from the office. So if, if organizations can create this culture for them, I think, uh, especially nowadays, many employees would be more concerned about upskilling themselves and making themselves relevant. The key thing I always talk in all my seminars when I start all my training seminars is we need to constantly reinvent ourselves. The key word is reinvent. And the way we reinvent ourselves is by adding more competencies and more skills. Okay. So my take is the individual, the employee should take, the owner should be on him to develop himself, to make him, to reinvent himself, to make himself relevant to the current demand for a particular task, the way a particular task is, has been uh, recrafted to be executed. And the organization can create the culture, can direct him with the correct resources for him to upgrade himself. Sometimes, right. sometimes organizations may want to totally sponsor the employee's training. Sometimes they may want to go 50-50 to get a commitment from the employee. Right. I think that's an uh, interesting thought. So here in, um, I would like to bring in Dr. Prashant um, and, you know, our participants, I would like to share with you that Dr. Prashant is behind, uh, you know, uh, My Lab Discovery Solutions, uh, Pensive Health. And these are the organizations, you know, uh, pre-COVID, just correct me, Dr. Prashant, that very few people uh, knew about, right? And many people think uh, that, you know, how suddenly uh, an organization comes and, you know, launches a uh, self test kit for covid ahead of the global giant ahead of about ahead of a lot of these companies so uh, dr prashant is it a lot of years of preparation and uh, you know training and you know being ready for the moment or what exactly is it uh, please share your uh, you know thoughts on this 
Yeah, so thanks, thanks. Uh, actually, what we see, you know, most of the times we are very reluctant to invest. Okay, and when, if at all we are ready to invest, we want immediate return. Okay, though it is a skill, though it is a knowledge, though it is a money, or though it is a emotions, or though it is a relations. Unfortunately, uh, we all are, you know, a little bit short-tempered or, you know, want immediate results, a 2020 kind of era. Okay. So, um, when when we started our job in 2008-9, that time H1N1 was there. At that time only we realized that how helpless we are. And most of us uh, were doing a job that time and it took consistent digging out for four to five years, how to do that, 2009, 2010 to 2015. 2015, 16, something sucked, something tangible and it gave us the, you know, the fruit in 2020. So though people say that, you know, it is one night fight, but, you know, it is just like a tip of iceberg. You, you, you see the tip, but you don't see the, you know, the entire, uh, you know, the, uh, whatever the sweat and blood we have burned uh, behind that. Uh, but having said all that thing, yeah, definitely you should have some uh, uh, strategic planning. And as I said, uh, it is good to say that it be focused, do this, 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 this. But, you know, in business that doesn't work because you have to have plan A, plan B, plan C ready. It is not like that if plan A will not work, your ego doesn't come in and then you know, no one is going to shut the business. So, you know, likewise, you should have a plan A, plan B, plan C ready. I'm sure that anything will work out because at the end of the day, it is a fit and benefit model. So today, if plan A is working, there is a day for plan B and there is a day for plan C also. Because it's all about the timing. As, as you correctly said, it is a thinking ahead of the time and then a timing. Because then... and, and you should have the social quotient if you really want to be ahead of the time. Social quotient means you can put it in other words, the market quotient. That how the market is moving, how it will be. That time only we realize in May 2020 when first lockdown opened up. Now this disease is going to be in the rural part of India. How I am going to test my rural people, rural citizens? Because as long as it is in Mumbai, Pune, Delhi, Bangalore, it's okay. They have the labs and all. So from that time only, it started digging out that how it, you know, how the democratization of diagnostics will have, happen, how the democratization of the healthcare will happen, how it will move from very specialized or niche area to the consumer product. Okay. No one th thought that, you know, for any diagnostic kits, Akshay Kumar will come and, uh, you know, <laughs> do the advertising. So you have to sometimes think out of the box and all the time you may not be a successful. So now everyone is talking about one success, but no one is talking about many, <laughs> many failures behind it, you know, and the, every failure is giving a, you know, the, um, uh, you know, the learning lesson rather than failure, I will take it as a learning lesson. And I think, you know, uh, there are many questions which I would like to answer, but we will answer it in, uh, you know, uh, question and answer series. Because most of them, you know, I, I really appreciate, they want exactly what are the skills, you are talking about skill set, skills here, but what are the skills? Definitely, I would like to highlight that, but in uh, question and answers. Thank sure, you. sure. I think very uh, motivating story. And, you know, uh, again, you, your team has done Dr. Prashant fantastic job over the last year or so in, uh, you know, the fight against COVID. So fantastic. Congratulations to all of you. And, uh, you know, with this, uh, again, just moving on and talking about a few Companies across the world, state technology companies, state consulting companies, already have a roadmap of you know five to seven years where they would want to reskill either most of their work companies uh, with size of you know of one lakh people, one lakh and a half, you know large scale global operations uh, across the globe. So with this, you know, uh, it brings us to another interesting part that uh, you know need to take things in their own hands as far as their learning journey is concerned. But what is the role uh, an organization needs to play if they want to be ahead of the game? And I would want to bring in uh, Kishore at this point in time. Kishore, if you could talk about maybe just you know two or three specific areas 
which you think uh, would be very relevant uh, for the organizations to you know start this journey and then take it forward moving ahead in terms of uh, you know broad skill sets that they should be talking and you know uh, moving ahead with their employees okay broad skill sets would be uh, microsoft office uh, intermediate and advanced like i said many of us have learned microsoft office through trial and error we have not attended any formal courses but there are so many steps and keys and shortcut techniques that we are not aware about in making our powerpoint slides in in doing our data mining using excel there are so many tips and ideas that we are not aware about that can increase our efficiency and productivity so going to these very basic things but going into the intermediate and advanced stages are very important skills we need to learn for leaders like i said earlier um the training that i have done for some of my clients called agile leadership okay traditional leadership skills focus on dominator negotiator coordinator styles of leadership but nowadays in agile leadership where we need to manage things uh because of rapid change and high complexity the competencies are no more dominator negotiator coordinator the competencies are now expert achiever catalyst co creator and synergist having complete different skill sets for leaders how to master this and how to go from one one stage to another becomes very 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 important general skills like design thinking singapore government has started sponsoring design thinking in singapore for the last 5 years with 90% government funding imagine if someone sends their staff for training government pays 90% singapore has no resources has no mountains no water no land is such a tiny small country yet one singapore dollar is about 50 indian rupees you know why because the only resource we have is people and the government invests a lot in upgrading and making the people competent and skilled that is why singapore today is one of the top countries although it doesn't have any natural resources so things like basic um basic skills office skills but going into the intermediate and advanced stages things like design thinking okay things like agile leadership people are now going to look for leaders who can handle this rapid change with huge complexity normal leadership won't work now it's completely different and things to complement if i may just take a minute the things to complement the technical skills would be things like uh, cognitive flexibility which uh, comes about in agile leadership negotiation becomes very important service orientation where design thinking user experience design user interface design becomes critical skills judgments and decision making okay where data analytics becomes very important to upgrade your technological caution how to complete reports in a way that are so thorough that your manager just have to sign and submit to the board for approval nothing more for him to do these are actual skill sets trainings available for people on how to really upgrade themselves okay so yeah Great, right, of course. Right. The last, the last three are creativity, critical thinking, and complex problem solving. Right. People should all the time keep upgrading themselves in these areas. Right. So, uh, you know, you you're talking about basically, you know, two two buckets. One is uh, technology, you know, familiarization with technology, whether it is MS Office, whether it is you know, technological portion that we're talking about, and the second piece is soft skills, soft whether skills, it is. Yes. design thinking whether it is negotiation skills whether it is yes. collaboration leadership, you know yes. whether it is teamwork so those kind of things which will be equally important in the coming times to come uh, and devinder your thoughts you uh, lead an organization which is a multinational and um, also into technology so if you can share two or three themes or you know specific programs or uh, that you are driving in terms of skilling your people here in india and uh, you know across the globe sure so uh, uh, one thing that you know, i like to definitely share is that during the goal setting uh, part right during the you know, 
we make sure that uh, every employee has 15 to 20 percent of weightage going to dense metal goods, right? And what is more important that further defining those developmental goals in a way that what a person is going to learn after learning, how is going to share the, with the team, right? How is team members are going to rate him? And last one, how is going to implement it, right? So all, all knowledge is waste till the time it's not shared or implemented, Correct. right? What I shared my, with my colleagues out here or the top management that Focus always should be to you know, develop a learning organization, right? Anything which a person is learning out there should share out there and you no know, common sharing helps the person, no company to grow, right? It, it changes the way every person looks at each other, right? Right. So that's one thing that I you know I always focus on, right? Second, uh, for the learning uh, perspective, uh, you know, for learning organization, we also focus on the uh, no, uh, diversity hiring in the uh, no, diversity hiring in the hiring part. What I mean by diversity hiring is that any person which is coming with a different thoughts and respecting any but other thoughts, right? So that can be gender, that can be you no know, uh, religion, that can be from coming from the different areas. Anyway, hire people which are coming with different thoughts out there, different ideas, and ready to respect other people also. Right, so this helps me to you know, uh, kind of have a culture and an environment out here which creates a learning organization. Fantastic. So we are not only stopping to that first level, but going till fourth level. Right, so important. I think you uh, you've spoken about learning organization. So you know it is like an individual. It is also a unit. So we've spoken about somebody and individual level, you know, one has to be eager to learn. Similarly, the same culture has to be developed in the organization as well. So Dr. Prashant, any uh, closing thoughts on this uh, before we move on to the Q&A section? Uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, when we are talking about the skill set, okay, definitely uh, uh, everyone will like to have, you know, the take home message or, you know, the, what are exactly skill set we are talking about. So, me as a person will always divide skill set in two parts. One is a soft skill and one is you can say hard skill or the technology part, which is a different domain to domain, you know, could be a different in my sector and in healthcare also there are various sub-segments. But as uh, Kishore sir said uh, initially, believe me, most of us are not even well versed with the MS office. Okay, basically, you know, our effective way nowadays, you know, now during COVID time and also, you know, how to make an effective PowerPoint. What are the basic five thumb rules of making a most attractive representative PowerPoints? We don't know. So if, if someone asks me to make up 10 slides, I may take one day. But if I really know shortcuts, if I know a secondary and tertiary level knowledge of PowerPoint, I can make it in within 30 minutes. Yes, and, and Excel. The name itself is an Excel. If you really want to excel, you, you should learn the Excel. Any software in healthcare across, you know, the, what is the basic input is going garbage in, garbage out. Basic data, once go in any software, it arranges in Excel. R, R is the language, statistics, you know. And in every science, whether it is engineering, whether it is a healthcare, whether it is your HR, everywhere, various softwares are there. So the data has to be arranged in array so that each and every entry or the data point should have an equal opportunity for permutation combination to get the possible combinations. And that's how any software works. So that has to be put in the Excel. We don't know. We basically know the Excel, how to make a tables, but secondary knowledge, tertiary knowledge, believe me, we don't, even I don't know, I'm learning. And I'm, I'm telling you, Udemy is a very good site. Okay, as and when you find free, free courses are there, okay. And every Saturday, Sunday, I'm spending at least three to four hours for fine tuning my skills. There are many, many, many courses on Udemy. Okay. You, at least because, you know, you should spend two hours or three hours if you really want to survive. Okay. The second basic skill is email etiquettes. Because we are interacting with many known unknown people in our organization, outside our organization. Just by learning, by reading your email, 
i can guess the personality i can guess the knowledge level of that person okay so this is this is the first time email then next thing is that you know many email threads are going within organization believe me 90% of the stuff is all about the stupidity i'm sorry to use the word because most of the none, none of us take a, that precautions even to check you know uh, the what you can say uh, the the sub, uh, subject of that email we are not changing the subject and if, if you read the email thread the entire discussion has been changed here and there and the answer has been given in past some week backs but still we are keeping question and answer on the same email so no one bothers to even to change the topic to whom to keep in to to whom to keep in cc so do we really keep you know every time the bosses in the cc you know unnecessarily it is a filling the inboxes so these these are the very basic very 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 basic and preliminary soft skills second thing is you know uh, the peer acceptance you know how 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 to talk to your colleagues and all you know i'm i'm, I'm going to talk in question and answer series about the hard skill also but these are the soft skills which everyone should know right i think uh, uh, you know in uh, in a true scientist fashion you have spoken about the very very basic stuff but extremely important stuff so out of uh, you know from this discussion before moving on to the q and a uh, i would say three four things uh, just to wrap up this part of the session you know one all of us are aware i think a uh, lot of us are you know at the start we we saw through the poll already aware that the landscape is changing the business requirement is going to change there is a lot of hard data research which suggests that you know the skill requirement in the coming times whether you know 3 to 5 years time frame 6 years time frame is going to be very very different so now if you if we you know that uh, you know there is an equal responsibility i would say uh, on the organizations as well as the employees a bit more on the employees or the individual rather i would not say employee whether it is a professional or a student or anybody who is wanting to uh, move further in their careers or their knowledge uh, to use different avenues uh, invest time regularly like uh, dr prashant uh, said uh, you know uh, you can choose your you know whatever time you can find find out in a week but maybe let's say 3 to 4 hours in a week to learn something which interests you uh, and that is going to stay with you so do invest time uh, use there are a lot of uh, tools there are a lot of uh, websites and a lot of uh, you know learning areas which which are available online and you can utilize that talk to your peers uh, you know talk to people who are senior to you uh, you know who can lend you a helping hand or who can advise you how to go about it uh, and also organizations you know which which uh, want to be leaders in their areas would again uh, should take proactive steps you know have some structured plan in place see where their business is moving what is the you know prediction in terms of the requirement from the business side and accordingly take a uh, informed view and execute that plan which is extremely important and the last piece is that you know it is not only all about hard skills so it is not only going to be all about you know uh, artificial intelligence machine learning things like that soft skills are going to be equally important which are difficult to replicate uh, you know by machines and those will be in demand in the coming time so with that i would uh, you know want to move to the q and a piece quickly and uh, i'll take the first one from nimki i'll request panelists to keep it short and crisp uh so what skills should we look for hr consulting firms in 2030 okay pretty uh, interesting ones uh so i will take that one so you know nimki what what happens is so we are not talking about industry specific but the similar skills that we have spoken about of course there will be certain uh, hard skills which which will be specific to industries which will be needed but more so we have touched upon a lot of soft skills which will be cutting across various industries you know which will be required of course your domain knowledge is there so if you are into consulting you know you need to know your subject you need to know the best practices in your industry you need to know what is the cutting edge research which is happening you need to be practicing in that particular area you know you need to be advising clients uh, on the ground so all that will come into place and would be needed but again 
uh, soft skills uh, are going to be extremely important and i think one should focus uh, on that which we have already spoken about next one uh, is from arthur michael so arthur talks about uh, with a hybrid model being considered as a future way of working what kind of an hr architecture will the organizations need to look at from a workforce perspective so devinder would you want to uh, take up this question yeah so uh, in the hybrid model right what we need is a first, first of all a strong uh, infrastructure hr infrastructure from the it point of view which create makes as a no use as a platform on which you can do different activities right so uh, if you want to you know do a take care of performance management how you can have that you know performance management clearly mentioned and you keep on changing as per the time right it can be used something like adobe has used right similarly you know uh, wellness and uh, health related uh, initiatives that you can do you need an uh, platform to go for those activities uh, now a trend that is there is a continuous uh, employee satisfaction survey that happens almost five to six times in a year right with small small questions with small modules right so you no know, taking that data from there and you no know, uh, you know devising all the things where you can take the immediate action before a simple issue becomes complaint or the grievance right third uh, or part which is very important is the you know developing your collaborators or the peers you know your parallel leaders on doing that so what uh, no we are doing out here is that what we trained out here leaders to whenever they are talking to the you know employees out there spend first 3 to 4 minutes in discussing how the things at his home how is he right feeling out there any problem that he is having or not before jumping to the work right and every leader has to be you now have show some kind of empathy and you know, what i mean by that is that when other person in front of you, you no know, accepts that yes he is genuinely caring for me right so doing those, those kind of a things out there training that you know your uh, leaders or the captains to work in a hybrid model or the virtual model out there that you no know, that gets gets the uh, well being of this you no know, uh, employees in difficult scenarios right it's uh, even after the uh covid scenario working in hybrid model working from home is not going to be very easy right person moves from personal to professional you no know, uh hat he keeps on changing his hat roughly around five to six times in a day right and it's tiring believe me right so every captain or the leader of the organization has to have you no know, that kind of a sensitivity to take care of those things true so true i think okay uh, answer right i think very well put across so uh, we'll take the last one uh, from mr deepak vora uh, dr prashant you have also uh, you know i think seen the, the list of uh, questions in the q and a uh, just quickly if you would want to touch upon some of the you know other skills that were left out maybe you know some of the domain specific skills uh, if you can spoke about so i think you know uh... first i will just try to answer very briefly in the interest of the time from mr deepak gora so you know uh, his his question is uh, that you know the powerpoint uh, skills uh, you know will save the cost of the operator and not the management skill but you know we are taking it in a wrong way you know this is not for saving the cost or something like that powerpoint i personally feel is you know uh is the way the, the name itself is a powerpoint you know how impactful you are how powerful you are will you me i i i how my some personal experience uh, both in technology side as well as on the commercial side just because of the powerpoint presentation we have own big tenders okay just on the powerpoint slide just on the a good oratory a skill or the convincing skill and you know on on technology side whenever i used to present my research proposal that was also on the powerpoint side so powerpoint there could be ar vr this will keep on changing when we mean to say powerpoint we we, we mean to say a platform to communicate audio visually okay now there is a zoom there is a google meet there are n number of things there is a skype and all other things okay so but the thing is that 
how 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 you are okay so how 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 powerfully or how impactfully you are presenting now when we say uh, i have seen the powerpoint slides which are flooded with the information there is no space you know it is let's just look like essay writing and there are powerpoints where hardly there are four to five powerpoints but that are passing more impactful message rather than writing the entire thousand and uh, hundreds of the words so we are talking about that skill set of the powerpoint whether you are putting something in terms of diagrams in terms of flow chart in terms of the numbers and all other things because in every field now big data is going to come because of the internet and because of the advance in the technology information is going to flood like anything bombardment of the information now if you keep this information without processing it it is as good as buying the grocery and not cooking in your kitchen now the same grocery say for example is there in the two kitchen and there if there are two chef if one know how to process it very strategically you can get the five star seven star hotel price and one can merely you know fulfill your daily requirement of having a, a food to survive so this this information is just like a raw grocery now how you process it is totally depend on the various data analysis tool powerpoint excel the way you present and how much maximum 360 degree information you can churn out you can you know squeeze out from the same set of the data point right that we are going to talk right now this is this is this is this is there for marketing also now how you are getting say for example you know marketing qualified leads if you are running some facebook campaign so you find that oh 75000 visits are there for your particular page or like that you know are that does it mean that all are the mqls no there are some you know how you are analyzing that you know i think most of you must be using salesforce and all you know so this could be a different uh, seminar if we, I, i keep on talking on that but what i mean to say that whether it is hr whether it is a sales whether it is a marketing whether it is a technology whether it is any segment you are supposed to process the data a big data because now at at a fraction of minute fraction of second now i can send from here uh, to singapore to kishore sir then to us or something like that yeah, on a click up uh, you know tip of finger so now how i am using that data in a multiple way it is not something like that you know it, I, i i personally feel that every data has a 360 degree value and i can tell you many research papers from the indian scientists if they would have been processed in a different way the data got from that it would have been published either in nature or science that is a dream for every scientist but we are not knowing the ways and means how to process the data so that it could be the usp of the same data points so that we are talking we are not talking only about the powerpoint we are not talking we we are talking about the uniqueness the same thing how you no know, uh, now there is a old book when we were in the school days we used to read winners never do the different things they do the same things in a different way a book from shukhera so that applies for everyone so that point of view we are talking about you know um there are various ways now you you forget you know earlier there, there was a bio data resume now there are video resumes also 360 degree presentation you are talking now people are talking about the video resumes also okay earlier there used to be a only uh, shooting for the wedding and now there is a pre wedding shooting also so you know the things are very dynamic they will keep on changing you know you cannot stop so but only thing is that are you receptive to adapt those skills uh that to proactively yes i think uh, dr prashant uh, uh, very well put across see the uh, thing is that it is uh, in the paucity of time we may not be able to touch upon you know skills which are required for each domain but the thought was to uh, you know give a broad level view as to uh, what are the requirements how the landscape is changing and i think our uh, to be fair to the panelists they did touch upon uh, the specific skills also whether it is on the uh, you know soft skill side or technology side uh, which is required and uh, i think if if still the answers uh, are not there please feel free to reach out to us after the webinar uh, kishore i'll just come to you so maybe you know uh, 30 seconds or a minute and then we'll wrap up uh, we are already uh, you know behind uh, our uh, slot okay yes please uh, over to you kishore i just want to add another skill for deepak is asking things like e-commerce design 
app design and social media marketing will be very much in demand. App design is very important because all organizations are going through e-commerce now and everybody want to have their own app so that they can make, make it a good and quick interface for their customers to communicate and place orders with them rather than relying on outsourcing app design all the time to other people. And every time there's a new product or a new way how the app needs to be worked, again, they need to be totally dependent on the outsource app designer. It is better if people within the organization uh, have the skills of app design. Also, social media marketing. We cannot run away from these two. These are two very, very important skills, not only for the future, even today, and for the very immediate future, uh, e-commerce skills, app design skills, and social media marketing skills are very, very critical. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that input, Kishore. And before we uh, move towards the last part of our discussion, would like to, I think, uh, kudos to all our panelists uh, that uh, we started off with uh, whatever number of participants who were there. We, uh, you know, not a single one has dropped. So which talks about that, you know, we are able to give back something uh, to our participants, which is, which is good. And uh, would like to just uh, close before uh, I hand it over to Ranu, would like to quickly run one last poll and uh, just to understand what are the takeaways of our participants from today. So would take just uh, 10 seconds for you, would request the participants to quickly answer the poll. Okay, so there are about 20% who voted. We'll be sharing this, these results with our panelists as well. Please do share your thoughts as to what are the key takeaways that you had from today's session. So we still had about 60% people who voted, request all the participants to quickly vote. And we'll close it in the next maybe five seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. I'm just ending the poll and sharing the result. So there you go, uh, panelists. I think uh, time well spent. So most of the people feel that their understanding about the topic is improved or they feel more confident about handling their own skill journey. So with that, uh, I'll just stop sharing the result and I hand it over back to you, Ranu, for the closing thoughts. Thank you, Abhimanyu. We now come towards the end of our webinar. I would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our panelists today, Mr. Kishore, Dr. Prashant, and Mr. Devinder for enlightening us with their knowledge. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. And thank you so much all the attendees for being a part of this webinar. We hope you found the session interesting and informative. Our recorded version of this webinar will be available on YouTube channel. Please do follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube for regular updates. With that, we would conclude our session today, and I would like to leave you with a positive quote. You make a life out of what you have, not what you are missing. Wish you all a wonderful, happy, and blessed weekend. Once again, thank you so much, everyone for being a part of this webinar. Thank you, Thank you and much. wish all of Thank you. Thank you all and wish you all the best. Stay healthy, stay safe, and Thank have a great learning journey ahead. Thank you so much, Thank all you. of you for joining in. Thank you.